and we will get started. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Beloved Community Worship. I am so, so happy to see faces on this screen that I haven't seen yet this semester. And um, I don't know about y'all, but it kind of feels like the semester just started this week, even though I know y'all have been in classes, but returning back to in-person is has made it, you know, a little different this week. So we are very excited to have Roland Fernandez with us as our preacher this week. He is the General Secretary for Global Ministries and the United Methodist Committee on Relief. He started in this position in September of 2020 and has been with the organization since 1995. He is a layman who grew up in Kolkata, India, and he understands mission as the heart of the church's work and sees global ministries as uniquely prepared to further God's mission on behalf of the whole world. In 2016, he oversaw the move of global ministries from or to Atlanta from New York City as part of an agency-wide review. And among his personally rewarding involvements has been the creation of the Umcor Armenia Foundation that flourishes today in service to the very vulnerable population. And we are just excited that he is here and to speak with us this morning. And uh, with that, we will uh, move into our first song. I invite you to um, join us in worship as you um, are comfortable and uh, worship with us in this first song.
Now we will have our first reading. And um, since this is a week celebrating global ministries, we've asked Lynn to read this in her um, first language. Matthew 28, 16 to 20 in Vietnamese. 11. Môn đồ đi qua xứ Galilee, lên hòn núi mà Đức Chúa Giêsu đã chỉ cho. Khi môn đồ thấy Ngài, thì thờ lại Ngài. Nhưng có một vài người nghi ngờ. Đức Chúa Giêsu đến gần, phán cùng môn đồ như vậy. Hết cả quyền pháp ở trên trời và dưới đất đã giao cho ta. Vậy hãy đi dạy dỗ môn dân. Hãy nhân danh Đức Cha, Đức Con và Đức Thánh Linh mà làm phép báp thai cho họ và dạy họ giữ hết cả mọi điều mà ta đã truyền cho các ngươi và này ta thường ở cùng các ngươi luôn cho đến tận thế. Good morning everyone. Let us pray. God, thank you for another day. Thank you for this beloved community and each and every person who was part of it. Thank you for bringing us together again to worship you. We thank you that we have the opportunity to hear from Roland Fernandez today. God, I pray that you would open our ears to hear from you and that you would speak to us this morning. And I pray that the words we hear will resonate with us and inspire and encourage us to be more like you. In Jesus' name, amen. And now we will have the pass passing of the peace. And so we invite everyone to just share one word about how you're feeling today. You're welcome to uh, share your screen if you'd like or use the chat function for this. Um, I see Jenny says renewed. I'm relaxed this morning. I'm hungry. And I feel like I say that every week, but we keep talking about food in our meeting beforehand and now I'm hungry. <laughs> See, joyful, determined. We got two thankfuls. Those are good. Those are good. I'm going to say refreshed. I'm content. Content. Well, as others um, feel led, we invite you to, to use the chat. And this time we are going to have our second reading which comes from Isaiah 6, 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on the throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings, they covered their faces. With two, they covered their feet. And with two, they were flying. And they were calling to one another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, for I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips and I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. When it touched my mouth, he, and with it, he touched my mouth and said, see, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here I am, send me. I shared in the uh, in the in the chat. I'm thankful to be here. 
grateful to see all your faces. And uh, I was supposed to speak last year and I just got something happened and I'm here today. So again, whether it's on Zoom or in person, I'm so grateful to be here with all of you. There are strong ties between Emory and the United Methodist General Board of Global Ministries, uh, the agency which I currently lead and they go back a very long way. You know, Global Ministries is a mission and humanitarian service organization. It includes the United Methodist Committee on Relief, also called UMCOR, UMCOR. And we celebrated our 200th anniversary in 2019 and uh, Emory's Candler School of Theology participated in planning a bicentennial conference at the Emory Conference Center. Our mission training, our mission training used to be here also for several years. It's no longer there, but it used to be at the same campus. And the university's former president, Jim, James Laney, for whom the School of Graduate Studies is named, began his professional career as a short-term young adult missionary in Korea following World War II. Three years ago, we joined the World Methodist Council in presenting the Methodist Peace Prize to Dr. Laney for year, long years of work promoting peace, notably in Korea, where he was the US ambassador appointed by President Carter. It seems providential that representing a mission agency, the readings for today, uh, dictionary readings for this fifth Sunday at Epiphany are all about service to God's mission, or at least most of them are. The Old Testament uh, passage uh, from Isaiah 6, you know, includes the famous call and response of a young person that carries God's message to the community. As you heard in the dramatic scene in reply to the question, whom shall I send or who will go for us? Isaiah says, here I am, send me. This biblical text has found its way into the experience of many individuals across the centuries. In the first reading that you heard from Matthew, you heard of the great commission that Jesus gave before he ascended. So the theme for today is all about responding to a call. You know, question, who sh whom shall I send? And I believe we all wrestle with this question in one way or the other. Who is called? Am I called? And how are we called? I truly believe that every one of us is called to different places and to different roles. Some of the oldest recorded philosophies and cosmologies dating back to probably two to 3,000 years ago to ancient Greece offer up a view of human potential and of our place in the world, which is both beautiful and compelling. We're not here to be safe, but to risk everything. We didn't necessarily come here for the purpose which society often seems to want us to believe we are here for. Work as hard as you can and retire well and then kind of wait to die. Well, you know, that's sort of how it, I'm just summarizing that really briefly. But really, if we're here to fulfill our calling, to walk wholeheartedly along the path which leads us here, regardless if that path is hard or even dangerous, that we bring into this world and carry inside us a unique and innate vision and gift, a kind of concealed invisible potential, which we are intended to express during the course of our lives in this world. And this is our link to the divine, to the beloved, to the source, to God. And what is it that holds us back? You know, we use many words, but one word that often comes to mind is fear. You know, the Bible uses the word at least 50 times, uh, at least 50 times in the Bible, the word fear appears. And yet Psalm 27, one says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the struggle of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The reading from Matthew today talked about Jesus saying, I will be with you always. And so why would we be afraid? And so our journey therefore calls us to experience God personally first through prayer, contemplation, meditation, nature, whatever brings us that God experience. We each have to find a way to help ourselves to be connected and stay connected to God or the divine spark in each of us as Thomas Merton and others have said. But secondly, and as importantly, the gift is not about the unfolding of our own individual soul alone, but it is about serving the greater good, the place where we are called to serve and participate in the gods, in the unfolding of God's mission and its becoming. It is a journey towards both personal and communal transformation. And there are many ways to do this. Perhaps beloved community is one of them. One of the traditional ways has been for individuals to go into what has been called the mission field. 
at global ministries and through our predecessor organizations, we have been involved in helping people answer a call and sending them as missionaries. A missionary is defined as a person who crosses boundaries for the purpose of sharing the message of God's love with other people. The crossing of boundaries, the bridging of cultures, is evident in the work of the very first Christian apostles, including Paul. He and Peter, so the story goes, left the Middle East for Rome. Thomas is said to have traveled to India. Mark, the author of the oldest gospel, preached in Egypt. Many boundaries were crossed in the early days of Methodism in the United States as the church in the Atlantic colony spread westward and around the world. John Stewart, the first missionary, missionary associated with what is now Global Ministries, crossed a racial boundary. He was an African-American from Virginia called to ministry with the Wyandorf native people of Ohio. The crossing of boundaries in mission today, we symbolize the description of our missionaries as from everywhere to everywhere. You can see it behind me on the screen. Global Ministries has used this language to reflect a shift in our understanding of mission over the past half century. Missionaries no longer just go from the West to the rest, but instead God calls faithful people from all over the world to serve in mission. This recognition is both a recent shift and truth of the biblical model. God calls many people in many ways to serve. Speaking of missionaries, have you been in connection with one? I know scores of missionaries, remarkable people. You know, we have about 350 of them, or at least we had before COVID-19 uh, put travel restrictions uh, and impacted our numbers. The recruitment, training, and placement of missionaries is one of our four program priorities as an agency. And missionaries relate to the other three, which are evangelism and church revitalization, global health, and humanitarian services, which includes disaster response, responding to global migration, environmental sustainability, and clean water and sanitation. Growing up, I certainly didn't know too many missionaries when I was a student. I was aware of that missionary groups existed in my home country of India. But it was my job as chief auditor of the Methodist Church in India that I became aware of missionaries as individuals as I traveled the length and breadth of the country. One of the, one of the persons I first met uh, when I took on this role for this job was Lillian Wallace, a lifelong United Methodist missionary who would stay in India after her retirement until her death last year. Lillian and I worked and served together on the Executive Council of the Methodist Church of India. As I worked with her in several settings, she reflected an influence by positive views on her missionary. Lillian Wallace crossed many boundaries in India and in the church. She played many roles on the national, regional, and local levels. She loved and identified with India, learning the languages, customs, and expectations of the culture. And she inspired several generations of Methodist leaders who today occupy key roles in different parts of the world. And she was one of the persons who influenced me to be willing to cross boundaries when I had the opportunity to work for Global Ministries in New York. Lillian Wallace's life theme was simple. I do what Christ wants me to do, and it was simple as loving your neighbor as yourself. To her, everyone was her neighbor, and loving neighbor is how we serve God. And this is a means to both personal and communal transformation. Another missionary in India who instructed me on what it means to serve God by loving neighbor, I didn't know personally, and learned more about him more recently when I was researching a request to Amkor to supply respirators and other medical equipment to a hospital in Velour, India, hard hit by the Delta variant. Amkor responds to suffering regardless of race, religion, or national origin. In researching this request, I came upon Dr. Yu Lin, a Methodist missionary long deceased, described as a part of a long list of devoted doctors who have labored to meet the overwhelming medical needs in India. Dr. Lin was part of a vital, was a vital part of the healing impact. The reality is that the story will never be told, but will be forever locked up in the grateful memories of those who benefited by it. But this was a unique impact. He saw that medicines imported were expensive and out of reach of the poor. It was, in it, it was this concern that led him to create what was called the tablet industry, where he could bring desperately needed medicines closer to the economic possibilities of the people. The tablet industry in the 1940s and 1950s was the start of today's growing Indian pharmaceutical industry, which produces a great quantity of gener generic drugs. I love the fact that when this doctor and missionary saw both a way to serve neighbors, and promote economic prosperity by making pills. 
there's an interesting story told uh, how uh, one of there was a one of uh, a patient that he had was very sick and was lived 129 kilometers away and he went on a on a bicycle to try and reach this patient when he finally got there he was unconscious and the patient died but it just showed his commitment you know to try to serve uh, at that time the approach of combining compassion with economic incentive is a good model for the new and very current United Methodist Initiative in Africa. We are deploying underutilized church-owned land in sustainable food production to provide both physical nourishment and income to congregations and their families. The programs are under local control. I don't have the exact figure in acres, but from the days of what used to be called mission stations, the annual conferences and districts of our church in Africa want considerable land which can be used to create possibilities of self-sustainability. We organize our missionary community in different categories. And I want to tell you about one category that brings special energy to our work. This is, this is our short-term young adult missionary group. Earlier, I mentioned that Dr. James Laney, Emory's former president, began his life as a short-term young adult missionary in Korea. There were country specific programs for various countries in the world at that time. And there was a US2 program for the short-term domestic service in the United States. The US2 program was the one that lasted the longest and was combined decades later with an international mission internship to form what we today call the Global Mission Fellows or GMFs. The Global Mission Fellows program takes adults 20 to 30 years out of their home environments and places them in new contexts for mission experience and service. Strong emphasis is on faith and justice. Global mission fellows become active parts of their local communities, connect the church and mission across cultural and geographical boundaries. It is hoped that they grow in personal and social holiness and become strong leaders working to build just communities in a peaceful world. The Global Mission Fellow platform is wonderfully exciting, filled with energy, commitment, and a spirit of exploration. We have participants, Methodists, and otherwise, from unexpected places, Mongolia, Madagascar, Estonia, South Sudan. They may work as teachers, technicians, health aides, sports directors, or musicians. And they are placed in a wide range of religious, educational, and community organizations. Spread across the years of the young adult mission service is a sense of optimism and hope and of faith that goodness is at the heart of creation, linked to our own soul journey of personal and communal transformation. And there's a sense of being called to a purpose larger than self and finding happiness in that realization. I'll conclude with the words of Sarah Albert Amelia Bucket, a young woman, global mission fellow from South Sudan, now working in Mozambique. And she reports that God delights to call me in unique and personal ways. And wherever God leads, I will serve. Indeed, every one of us is called. God is calling us all to different places, to different roles. We need to wrestle with how we are being called. We need to wrestle with our natural feelings of fear. Knowing that if we do this alongside a communion of saints who have gone before us, all of who show us an example of the way. And the voice in the temple asked, whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And Isaiah replied, here I am, send me. Amen. Thank you for that beautiful message. Um, we will just have a, a silent moment now uh, to reflect before moving into our uh, prayers of the people. I would now like to invite Elizabeth to lead us in our prayers of the people. Good morning. I invite you now to enter a posture of prayer in whatever way is comfortable for you and join me for this segment. Uh, when I say, Lord, in your mercy, you respond with, hear our prayer. 
During this time, we'd also love for you to put your own prayers in the Zoom chat box as well, if you feel comfortable. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray for the people around the world who are spreading the goodness of God across the globe. Give them the strength to lift up communities in need and allow them to leave places better off than when they found them. Let them do no harm. Help them serve with pure hearts and intentions as loving followers of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the areas around the world that are suffering without aid, whether it's from natural disaster, poverty, disease, war. We ask for you to be with those people, Lord. Send humanitarian relief from neighboring governments and international aid organizations. Strengthen the resources, faith, and effectiveness of those trying to come to their aid. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, allow us to take UMCOR's lead and let us all make it part of our life's mission to spread God's love wherever we go and wherever we are. Even if we can't be part of a mission trip or travel across the, the globe to help those in need, allow us to still do some good here in Christ's name, whether it's giving a few dollars in a prayer to a homeless person or volunteering at local food banks and health clinics. Please open these opportunities to us, Lord. Give us the generosity, time, and resources to make the world at least a little bit better of a place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer out loud. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Elizabeth, I love your prayers every week. Thank you for that. Um, I just have a couple of announcements before we move into our final song. Um, as we've been doing, everyone's invited to stay on for our coffee chat. Um, I have a couple of questions brewing about how, how we can respond to our fears and how we can um, cultivate our call. So stay on if you want to. But next week, we will be back in Canon Chapel. Um, I believe Liz Martin is going to be preaching and we will have lunch. And guess what, y'all? We get to eat inside. We don't have to be freezing outside. So we will be, um, we get to, to be in Canon and then we can, we'll eat downstairs in Brooks Commons. So I hope to see your faces in person. Um, on Ash Wednesday, we're going to start this book called For the Beauty of the Earth. Um, it's a little daily devotion for the season of Lent that we will be doing for our Bible study. So if you're interested in participating, either send me an email, you can message me in the chat right now. Um, just let me know before um, probably February 20th so that we can make sure to have a book for you if you would like to participate. And um, there was something else I was going to say about e -news. Oh, um, we are accepting or will be accepting applications for our wise peer mentors. If anyone is interested in doing that, um, there, all of this info as always is in our e-news. So stay tuned and, uh, be sure to check that out. And now we will go to our closing song before we receive our benediction. <laughs> Thank you. 
the benediction I'll share these beautiful words from Thomas Merton, a little longer than a normal benediction. The world and time are the dance of the Lord in emptiness. The silence of the spheres is the music of a wedding feast. The more we persist in misunderstanding the phenomena of life, the more we analyze them out into strange finalities and complex purposes of our own, the more we involve ourselves in sadness absurdity and despair. But it does not matter much because no despair of ours can alter the reality of things or stain the joy of the cosmic dance which is always there. Indeed, we are in the midst of it and it is in the midst of us for it beats in our very blood whether we want it or not. Yet the fact remains that we are invited to forget ourselves on purpose, cast our awful solemnity to the winds and join in the general dance. God be with you. Go in peace. Thank you. And as I said, everyone is invited to stay on for our coffee chat. Um, if you're unable, we hope you have a beautiful week. Um, stay warm. It's going to be a little chilly and hopefully we'll see you next Sunday. <laughs>